Hi there, my name is Lars White. I'm from the Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. I'm here at the University of Leipzig in Germany, which is uh, where we collected most of our data um, of the AMIS project, um, which um, focuses on the pathways from maltreatment to um, childhood psychopathology. We analyzed um, most of our data together with um, our collaborators at uh, the University of Siegen, the TU Dresden, and the Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry for this study. Um, so we focused um, for this uh, research on hair cortisol, um, which is a relatively new technique capturing the cumulative cortisol secretion over the course of several months. Um, so our study really is the first um, to use this technique in a larger scale child sample um, to address the question whether cortisol secretion undergoes um, changes in the wake of uh, maltreatment um, changes that, that may reflect um, shifts in allostatic set points and in turn predispose to uh, childhood psychopathology. So of course um, our work builds on um, a large variety of previous important studies um, using um, salivary techniques and other techniques to measure cortisol. And this work has relatively consistently shown that adversity initially gives rise to a hyperactivation of the HP axis followed um, by a hypoactivation as reflected by reduction or a blunting of HP axis activity and reactivity. So um, part of, uh, here we used hair cortisol and part of the appeal of using hair cortisol besides the fact that it captures cortisol secretion over a relatively long period is um, that it is relatively robust to the uh, confounders of traditional um, cortisol assessment uh, techniques such as um, circadian rhythmicity, pulsatile secretion of cortisol, um, as well as um, situational factors. So moving on to our method and, and um, sample, um, we um, collected data from 537 children and adolescents for this study, whom we assessed um, for um, uh, maltreatment um, using parent interviews and CPS record analyses if they were available. Um, we also um, collected parent and teacher reports to assess psychopathology. And I won't go into the control variables, but we assessed quite a number of them as well, uh, which you can find in the paper. Um, so that takes us to our results. Um, so um, what you can see here is a graph um, showing how cortisol levels develop over age in maltreated versus non-maltreated individuals. So what we did for this analysis that we determined a region where these two regression lines differ significantly from one another. And this was between 9.5 and, and 16 years. So in this age range, we saw an average reduction of over 27% in hair cortisol levels among maltreated versus non-maltreated individuals. Now zoning into the maltreated group, we saw um, that this effect, um, this reduction effect, was also dose-dependent in that more chronic maltreatment and a larger number of subtypes um, led to a greater reduction of hair cortisol. Finally, we also conducted um, path analyses which showed that um, hair cortisol acts as a mediator of the effect of maltreatment on externalizing symptoms. So that takes us to our take-home message for this study. What we saw was that um, from about 9 to 10 years of age, maltreatment gives rise to a gradual and dose-dependent um, reduction um, of, of hair cortisol, um, which in turn um, predicted the level of externalizing symptoms. So to us, that really suggests that um, there may be important switch points um, in middle childhood for the effect of maltreatment on the neuroendocrine stress systems. And those switch points may be highly relevant also for um, clinical decision making. So needless to say, um, this, this work would not have been possible without the generous support um, of um, my collaborators here in Leipzig and um, all the um, collaborators elsewhere in the AMIS project. Um, also, I'd like to wrap up by um, wishing you all a happy reading, um, and I look forward to um, any um, responses and feedback um, via email.